Hello, I'm Claudia Tornquist, President and CEO of Kodiak Copper. Kodiak is an exploration company focused on copper exploration in North America. We were fortunate to make a discovery in 2020 at our MPD Copper Gold Porphyry project in southern BC, which was a real game changer for the company and set us up for a very large drill campaign this year. So we've been busy drilling. It's been a very busy and successful year as we are building on our initial discovery. Hello and welcome to London. How are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you here. Good to see you here. You're over for mines and money, obviously, except you, you're a little bit late to the party there, aren't you? Why is that? Oh, I was caught out by the COVID self-isolation <laughs> requirements and missed the first couple of hours, but now I'm there all you at good. the conference yeah. and all good. What's it like next door? In terms of footfall, in terms of exhibitors, is it sort of as busy as usual? Um, I've only been there for an hour because I came mm. late. And um, my first impression is there's definitely um, footfall and, and it looks busy. I've had already a couple of good discussions. So, yeah. That's all you can ask for, isn't it? Exactly. Right. OK, I, wanna, I wanted to catch up with you because we've been desperate for good copper stories. I always say this, especially after I've spoken to you, good copper stories are thin on the ground. Um, you start. You only kicked off this year, really. So you had you've built up, you had some money which you raised. You've got a porphyry there. So you've got a big target, twenty two thousand meters of drilling. You had a good year. Did were you able to achieve what you wanted this year? Yes, okay. I would say it's the short answer to that. Okay. We set out to drill the gate zone where we made a discovery, mm. high grade discovery last year, further and expand it significantly, and that's what we've done. Right. We've had some results from our drilling already and um, have are starting to see some real nice size now with the gate zone. It's gone from 125 meters, quite small, to 950 meters in length, over which we've drilled mineralization. Yeah. So that's really what we, we set out. And um, we only have less than half of all other drills all our drill results yet. Yeah, exactly. We have more to come in December, which should be quite exciting, and then more in the first quarter next year. Okay, so you, you, you've expand, expanded the footprint, which is which is something. Um, you used, was it one drill or two drills? Two drills. Two drills, okay, fine. So you, you, you kind of, have you been able to come at it at the right speed? Should you have allocated a third drill, fourth drill? How, how did you plan it out? And what's it been able to tell you in terms of informing what you do next year? Well, we've started with one drill and then added a second one right. um, in the summer. And that's really sort of the speed at which we want to um, progress because at this stage, we're really exploration drilling. It's all about discovery. Mm -hmm. And so you want to progress at a pace where you can still look at what you drill and each hole sort of informs the next hole, tells you where you, where you want to go. And then you make an informed decision where you continue drilling. Right. So um, sometimes I get asked, why don't you have three, four, five drills? Um, that's at the later stage when you do infill drilling, when you know where you are, then it makes sense. But right. at this stage, one, two drill rigs um, was our judgment is the right, right speed of advancing. Okay. We've drilled over 20,000 meters, 22,000 meters yeah. approximately, which is significant this yeah. year. Yeah. And we'll sort of continue the same speed next year to drill rigs potentially adding more um, throughout the year and yeah it's, it's going to exciting time. It, it, it is but it isn't it isn't because they, 2021 has not seen the benefit of a lot of investing in mining it's saying people are distracted by other things precious metal markets have been hit even battery metals the the you know the savior of the future battery metals have not you know not been immune to that disinterest okay so and I want to know how you play that. Do you say, well, actually, we're probably moving things at the right pace because no matter what we do, no matter what we put out, people aren't going to be interested. You've got some massive intercepts, you know, point forward, point seven sorts of grades over 150, 200 meters. It's, it's, it's meaningful in another time and would have had more effect. So do you just say, we accept the market is what it is and we will move, continue to move at this pace, but next year is a, a whole new ball game? How do you, how do you think about it? Well, look, the market is the market. We don't have any influence over that. Mm. It's obviously disappointing to generate good results and not see any um, reflection of that in your share price. Mm. You look at our insider buying, you will see that yeah, yeah. Um, 
myself and other insiders bought multiple times over the year. So that tells you what we think about what the value of our company is or what the value of our shares is and that yeah. we are undervalued, that there's still a long way to go. And I think at the end of the day, we've been very successful with our drilling mm -hmm. this year and we just keep going with the good work and eventually the market will recognize. At the moment, we have a market cap of 50 or 60 million. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at a comparable company, a company called GT Gold that yeah. um, many of your listeners might be familiar with, they made a discovery in, Porphyry discovery in BC, two years ahead of us. Mm. And they were taken out last year for 450 million mm. by Newmont. So that sort of... Um, how much money, but how much um, money did they spend along the way d doing that? Because that's, that's a nice end number. And you're two years behind time-wise, but how, how much behind are you in terms of the money that you need to spend to put yourself in that sort of position? Because I think we're moving into the supply demand fundamentals, well understood, right? Mm -hmm. Copper, we need copper, infrastructure projects all around the world, we need it, right? But how, how do you go from where you are, what you've discovered and done in 2021 to affect what you do in 2022 and then in 2023, you should be up around G GT, you know, GT level, shouldn't you? So how, well, do you do, how do you do it? <laughs> the way for us, I think, yeah. to generate value is at the drill bit. We um, have to keep generating good drill results mm. and um, expand the gate zone, which we yeah. are in the process of doing. And um, we also have other drill proven profit targets that have yeah. shallow results um, on the property which we will, just like the gate zone, drill deeper. So we have other targets where we'll apply the same model mm. and aim to unlock more discovery right. potential. Right, let, let, let's try and understand what that means though. I need to understand what that means because I know you've had some disturbance because of rain. I think mm -hmm. BC suffered, parts of BC suffered there. I wanna know how much money you've got to pour in to this thing and the timing of that and how aggressive can you be next year? Because you know, you've, you've kind of, there's been a couple of moments this year share price reacted really well and then kind of come off again, but it's been sort of sideways, right? You've got something good here. We drove results so far. Tell us that. You're buying. You know that. I want you to explain to people, you know, what is it that they need to be looking at? What do they need to know that you know that is going to move the dial next year? What I think will move the, um, the dial and really is will be the next big catalyst will be if we can replicate what we did at the gate zone, okay. make a discovery also at other How much money? profit targets. How much money are you going to need to And ask? as I said, next year's drill program will be approximately the same sort of as this year, mm -hmm. two drill rigs. Okay. And um, we'll probably drill a little bit longer. This year we started in March and mm -hmm. we'll be back earlier than that next year. So aiming for 25,000 meters plus and that should allow okay. us to test several of the other porphyry targets that we have on the property and yes. yeah, replicate what we did at the gate zone. So how does it build from here? Okay, so you've got one porphyry, you've done a lot of drilling there, you're gonna discover another porphyry, hopefully, right? What's the picture you're building for the investors? For You've got some good investors on board already, the register looks nice. Um, but to get more people, more excitement, what's the picture you're building? You know, we, we, okay, you're gonna say, well, then the next year, yeah, we've got three, four porphyries, it's all good. It's all pretty much homogenous in the sense of, this is what we understand about them. It, the collective st story of having those porphyries is, is what? To, to what end? What do, what do you do as a company which says, this is now worth, I don't know, 200 million? How, how do you tell that story? I think what um, it's about at the end of the day is size. Right. Porphyries are big elephant right. deposits. And that's what we have to prove with the drill bit. Right. And we, um, from all we can tell, um, have several porphyry mm. um, centers on the property, just like our neighboring mine, Copper Mountain. They have multiple porphyry centers, several other yeah. uh, BC porphyries Two. That's sort of quite a typical, mm -hmm. I would say, scenario. And we have some other porphyry centers that are our targets that are drill proven okay. um, shallow um, in the past. And like at gate, we will drill deeper and see if we can, like at gate, discover the higher grade material below the shallow historic. Okay. And that's 
wow, we will be building size. And that's really, at the end of the day, what it's all about. So I absolutely agree with you. If you can, if you can deliver Imperial Oxide, like, but to do that, do we need to put a resource on it? That's at one, one stage what we right. are working when, towards. But at this stage, it's still exploration and discovery. Okay. So we don't know yet whether we've filled the best target yet. Um, we just have to test to the others that we have. Chris Taylor, our um, chairman, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, sometimes um, um, makes the analogy with, with Great Bear. Mm. When they started drilling, they drilled, I believe it was the Dixie Limb first yeah. target. Then the second one they drilled was Hinge, made a nice discovery. Then they drilled the LP fault and that blew everything else out of the water. And uh, I'm not saying we will do something that blows everything out of the water. But what I'm saying is we just simply don't know yet whether we've right. drilled the first target, the best one, or whether there are better ones, Great. bigger ones, higher grade ones to come. We just have to taste, test them. Okay, good conversation to have because people need to understand or the audience needs to understand the clear strategy. Obviously, Great Bear have had great success using that model mm -hmm. and it would make sense to create as your chairman to say, I want to replicate that model. Convention suggest other conventions suggest that get a resource on it. That's the only way that the market really truly understands it, right? But I, I can see both arguments. I just want to know where you, you res, where you sit in that. So, um, twenty twenty five thousand meters drilling that that's that's a lot. That's getting exciting. Um, if you are to replicate GT, you, you quote a GT. Um, how much more drilling do you think you need to do, or do you want to go beyond that? Is that not really the model that we should be looking at? Because they were they were taken out for a nice number, but could it be bigger? Mm -hmm. Could yours be bigger? Well, I'm certainly aiming for bigger, if you'd ask me. But um, what I think in terms of just sort of the, the next stages, once we've um, drilled a good portion of, of next year's program and tested, drill tested um, several other targets, then we'll be in a position to make an educated decision on mm. where and when mm. it makes sense to start working on a resource. Yeah. Maybe we'll already start that um, next year, maybe it's the year after, but it's sort of the testing of the, the targets first, see what, we, what else we have on the other target areas, and then well, resource and further down the road. Yeah, because so there's a sort of um, conversation going on at the moment when we're doing these end of year reviews with companies and you're trying to work out how much is science and how much is sizzle and sizzle being over promotion, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I understand that the need for it in, in places. And I know you've made some board appointments recently as well, which is kind of, kind of uh, interesting. Um, we well, maybe tell me what you're trying to achieve there. Tell me wh why those board appointments and why now? Well, we've strengthened our board recently with a lady called uh, Lena mm. Eagle, mm. whose background is primarily in First Nations and Indigenous mm. relations, government relations, and um, she's a First Nations lady herself. From BC? And um, actually, she grew up in Saskatchewan, okay. lives in BC now. And she brings a lot of, of different viewpoints and diversity and, and um, enriches our discussion at board level. Mm. And um, I think really strengthens our board. Mm. And who else was there? There was another appointment. Not there were recently, recently. Um, management appointments as yeah. well. Okay. Um, we have Nancy Curry, who is the awesome. VP corporate development, very experienced. Um, corporate development and IR professional, mm. and um, Harpreet Pajaj, who is our new um, corporate secretary. This is what I want, I want the, the, the corporate development one, because I have to come back to this, this sizzle versus the science thing, which is the need to, you know, you're obviously over here in London, you're talking to new people, you, you've worked in London before, you've got a lot of contacts over here too, right? So you, you, you're, you're telling this story. Um, and you're very, uh, um, you know, this is a very conservative company. You're not a promotional company. I have no fears that you're overselling me, but I want a little bit more of that this year. Is What can we expect to see from you in terms of how you tell this narrative? And more importantly, who, who too? Who, who's listening mm -hmm. at the moment? Well, in terms of, sort of promotion and, and talking to the markets and investors. It's mm. an important part of my work and Nancy's work, of yeah. every public company's work. Um, as you said, um, 
we are certainly not at the promotional end of things. Um, I think it's important to, to um, have a solid of investor relations communications program in place. But at the same time, um, Kodiak is certainly not one of these um, stories that is heavily, heavily, heavily promoted. Yeah. I think it's a question about finding the right balance. It is. And so who are you targeting then as a result of that? I understand that about you before coming into this. I would never categorize you guys as one of those pumpers in the market. So, uh, but you, you, you've worked in London, you've got institutional access. This is a green metal story. This is a green revolution story. There's an EV story. It's copper. We're struggling to find good copper stories. Mm -hmm. Are institutions paying attention now? What are they asking you when you're having conversations? Well, at this stage, um, we have um, mostly retail investors. Obviously, yeah. we have our big investor tech resources, and um, yeah. we have good share of, of uh, management participation or share register. Um, not many institutional shareholders, um, but um, certainly interest from institutions. And going forward, um, I would also expect to add some institutions to our shareholder register. Yeah, because I, I, I just think it's important for companies when you reach a certain set, when you get that 50 to 100, you've got to start having those conversations because it gives you some cr more credibility than a predominantly retail. Yep. You, you need the retail for liquidity, etc. But you also need the endorsement mm -hmm. as well. So I just wonder if those are conversations you're having here in London or is it more about industry mm. next door? It's conversations we're, we're having all of the time. I think uh, uh, um, thing to understand also with Kodiak is the reason why we don't have any um, institutional investors. Mm. It's simply because um, last year after our discovery, when we raised $12.7 million, yeah. our largest ever by a mile um, mm. financing, and the first one that would have been interesting for an institution, we had institutional interest, but then tech made us an offer that we couldn't refuse. And it, consequently, yeah. um, we uh, went ahead and tech became our largest shareholder. What, and what are they holding? And I put, what, eight million bucks in, wasn't it? Yep. Sam, what are they holding? Yep. They um, subscribed for 9.9% .9 okay. of our shares at the time and became our largest shareholder. That was obviously very well received by the market, but meant on the flip side, no institutions um, came onto our um, share register. No strategics, but you could have yeah. financial. Institutions. That's what I'm sort of getting at to, you know, give you that kind of financial endorsement from the, well, I don't know if it's Canadian or, or European or, or otherwise. But that, is that something you're going to be looking at? Certainly. My, my point was the financing was taken up by yeah. tech. Gone. And so the institutions <laughs> who at the time were interested, um, yeah, yeah uh, didn't get in. But was that the right uh, move then? Was it the right move? Um, and tech's great. They are a fantastic right partner. Um, I think going forward, yeah. it will certainly be beneficial, as you say, to add some good financial institutional investors to our shareholder register. Mm. And that's certainly also what I'll be aiming for mm. going forward. Okay, um, I mentioned flooding. Everything's been thrown at BC miners this year. Yeah. Fires, flooding. Um, was down at Mojave. What, what's we, we talked about it a little last time we spoke? Mm -hmm. what, what's going on there? What's the well, attack? in southern BC, we certainly yeah. had very uh, difficult weather conditions yeah. this year. As I said, there were fires earlier on, and then flooding um, more recently. Yeah. Merritt, the city where we have our field office and core yard, has been evacuated. So we um, evacuated our crews. Yeah, right. And um, fortunately... You don't even mean partially, you mean like totally. Yeah, the entire city um, had Crazy. to evacuate. Wow. And we were fortunate in many ways um, in that our, our mm. um, facilities are on higher ground and weren't flooded. Um, many people, um, I really feel for them, had their houses flooded and it's a, a, yeah. a very difficult situation. For us, it meant essentially uh, we had to halt uh, the DOE program two weeks or so early. Um, we initially thought we would go back and drilling um, once uh, the flooding is over, but still now, two and a half weeks after, city services aren't up and um, it's just a real, real struggle for the city. Yeah. So um, we just um, stopped the drilling about two weeks early. Um, we'll motor ahead again next year. And we'll try yeah. and get back in a bit earlier. Um, yeah, we'll get back yeah. um, relatively early in Q1. Right, and what about down, down south? What's happening down there? Down south, as in our Mojave project? Yeah. 
um, that's sort of been ticking away in the in the background. Yeah. Obviously, our shareholders after the discovery wanted us to put the main focus on MPD. That's yeah. what we did this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, having said that, we um, did a little bit of work on Mojave, extended the permitting, and have a small initial maiden drill program planned for that project for next year. Mm -hmm. Just that we, as we did the same sort of approach um, as at MPD. Okay. And I'm looking forward to that. It's an interesting project, very similar story to MPD. It's a big porphyry in a great neighborhood, Arizona, mm -hmm. right next to a big mm -hmm. porphyry mine, um, Freeport's Baghdad mine. And um, it's been historically drilled, mm -hmm. lots of smoke, lots of interesting results. No more smoke, but sure. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> no more smoke. Yeah. No, no more, lots of smoke <laughs> as in good <laughs> drill results <laughs> and, and um, interesting sort of hints of mineralization. Yeah. And nobody has really figured it out yet. And so, yeah, we'll um, have a crack at that and see whether we can make that a success just as we did at MPD. Fantastic. Well, it, things like like look like they're being lined up for 2022. A lot of drilling. M money you're not concerned about. We have still almost 10 million in the mm -hmm. in the treasury. Yeah. And so are funded for well into uh, 2022 and under no pressure to Perfect. raise financing. So good place to be. Perfect. Good to see you. Welcome good to, to see London. You. I was going to meet you face to face. You better go pound the streets or bang down some doors and meet a few more people next door. Will do. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.